So after a long wait, I finally got my 8020 aluminum beams in. And the very first thing I'm doing is putting in a six foot um, 1515 series aluminum beam down on the floor. It's gonna serve two purposes. It's gonna be a mounting brace for all the furniture, the bed that I put on top of it. And it's also going to make sure the water tank is wedged in place. So I, so I don't have to glue the water tank so I you know I can remove it later if I need to. And what I just did was I put a little quarter inch sheet of rubber. I spray adhesived it to one side of the aluminum. And now I'm gonna drill down some pilot holes into this aluminum tube stock, which I use as a floor joist. Install a rib nut in it and then bolt directly into it. It's my first time using the riveting tool, but I did a test run on a little throwaway piece of aluminum and it worked just great, so I'm kind of excited about it. All right, wish me luck. You can see what a tedious process this is. First, I'm drilling out a hole just large enough with this drill bit in that three quarter inch tube stock below to put my rib nut in. And then when I have it machined just right, hopefully the rib nut should set in just like that, voila. Now, before I actually use the rib gun tool to clamp it in, I'm just gonna vacuum up all this metal shard and then I'm gonna put some epoxy on the bottom of the rib nut just to seal it in there, then I'll clamp it in. You can see I have my first two braces down on the floor for mounting my bed frame to perfectly straight, perfectly level. And now I have to drill my first ever hole into the van. I started a pilot hole right there. This is gonna be one of the top rails of the frame and I'm gonna use this super strong bracket from 8020 to support it. I'm gonna have one over here, I'm gonna have one over there on the far side, and then I will have an L shape that goes up over here and all connects together. But anyway, yep, my first hole drilled into the van and uh, doesn't make me feel good, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So the hole has been drilled. You can see my rib nut will fit perfectly right in it but the first thing I need to do is wipe down all those shavings and then I'm just gonna put a layer of rust-oleum over it to protect and seal all the exposed steel I'll let that dry for a little bit then I'm gonna put some epoxy on the lip of this rib nut right underneath it if it comes into focus sink it into the hole and then clamp it and then I'll do the other one down there Voila! So I did also buy these plus nuts, which are like riv nuts, except I guess a little beefier. They make it the shape of a plus sign when they're crushed. I'm not sure if these are better than the riv nuts. They might be. Um, I'm kind of experimenting, seeing which one is better. I think I'm going to use a plus nut over on the other side. So there's one thing they don't tell you in all those YouTube videos when working with these plus nuts is that little lip on the top actually sticks out a little bit. So when you're attaching your 8020, it doesn't really sit flush against the wall. It has some wiggle to it. Um, I noticed that working underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a very thin sheet of some heavy mass vinyl. And I'm going to tr try to put a gasket around that hole and see if that stabilizes it. So this is the rubber gasket that I installed around that rib nut, both to make it level and to act as a thermal break between the chassis and the rails. It's not pretty, but it's going to get covered up and it gets the job done. The other end of that bed frame that I want to drill to and install a rib nut is going to be a problem. As you can see, where it's flush against the wall is this weird rounded part with a panel gap right here and it's just not a good place at all to set a drill it's just too much of a slope so what i'm going to do is use this flat part right there that i have a very narrow window of put some aluminum tip stock underneath it like that and then i'm going to drill well you get the idea i'm going to drill it into the tube stock, just like that. So, I need to cut a little piece of this aluminum out. So, this was a scary 
thing to do. I want, I didn't go with that aluminum idea. I'm just going to try to install a, a plus nut into that weird curved shape and hope it works for the best. On the other one, I used a riv nut and the 8020 bolt. On this one, I'm experimenting. I'm going to use this big heavy duty pl brass plus nut and I'm going to use a carriage bolt that I just got from Home Depot. So I feel like I'm long overdue for an update on that bed frame, which I've been toiling at for days. Basically the bed will sit in this aluminum 8020 frame and I'm gonna have the bed slats be boards with magnets in the corner corners and I'm using these one foot long um, metal, I mean it's steel screw type things that I got from the depot. They will fit into these corner slats. I'm trying to show this to you, but it's kind of hard to hold the camera. They will fit in like that. Um, there will be magnets on the slats that will sit on top of it. Kind of hard to explain, but in my next update, I will show you guys the final product. Everything is more complicated than I imagined it would be. I had to use the rock grinder because these slots in the 8020 aluminum aren't exactly, I don't know what size they are. They're not a standard size, they're not a centimeter. So I got these rods and I had to grind it down in the grinder just so, so they'll fit in. And they will fit in one in each corner there and same on the other side. My removable bed slats are just about done, the overall structure anyway. So what I'm doing now is attaching those magnets which will connect to that steel I put in. I'm just using the widest drill bit I have to kind of rat out a hole. And then I got these neodymium magnets from Home Depot, which have, I think, 11 pounds of pull force each. They're really strong. And I'm just trying to get it to sit in flush. Um, I could use a router tool, but I really don't feel like buying any more tools at this point. I spent over a thousand bucks just on tools. I think this might actually work. Voila, my first project with the 8020 finally completed. This took days, a lot longer than I thought it would take. The basic system is my 31 gallon wheel well water tank will sit underneath. My battery bank and plumbing manifolds and stuff will take up this space um, above the tank. So everything else in the cargo area can be used for storage. This is just high enough to fit this toolbox which will contain all the car stuff and tools I want to keep into this slot here. The bed I guess it's a little higher than I want but I can work with that. The bed slats I just made of wood covered them in I think the wood is oak covered them in primer and paint and lacquer just to seal them up a little bit. Underneath these corners I have little magnets installed I don't know if you can see it from there. I kind of embedded them inside the wood and covered it with paint so it's almost invisible. But you can feel the pull when it catches. I think there's seven pounds of pull force each. So this should stay down under the force of the magnets and the weight of the mattress that will sit on top of it. It shouldn't rattle at all during driving or anything like that. Overall... I'm rather proud of how it came out, I gotta say. It looks pretty sharp. I can't wait to finally put my mattress on top of it and not sleep on the ground. Despite now living three hours from Boston, I still need to commute there once a week for work, which involves driving out there on a Tuesday evening and sleeping on the street. This was my first time going back with a proper bed frame so I didn't have to sleep on the floor. But, well... Well, I thought while I have a few hours of daylight left, I should really prepare for my living situation tonight. First thing I did was take my contacts out, replace them with glasses, so I don't have to fidget around at night. Next thing I'm going to do is just get out tomorrow's clothes, um, get out my you know, toothbrush and overnight stuff, and set up my mattress. thought I'd go for a walk around the neighborhood while I still have a little bit of light left. Clear in my head. My bed is made in there. I'm set up for the night. I got water. Yeah.
Oh, it's gonna be rough, but there's a beautiful sunset tonight. Maybe this is a good sign. One unusual thing about now being homeless is having a keychain with no keys on it. Uh, I took it out of my pocket and it just looked weird. I have my car key. That's all I have. It's basically just a knife. I'm pretty much set up in there. My bed and everything I need for tonight. Put some groceries in there, my food, napkins, all that stuff. Right now I'm just walking around the neighborhood to clear my head a little. And there's a beautiful sunset going on. You can see some pink light back there. That's gotta be a good sign, right? So you guys can see I have out um, tonight's food. I have tomorrow's clothes in there. Actually, I put some of my clothes up there. I have stuff I need for tonight, like soap and <clears throat> toothpaste and crap in there. And I'm gonna throw my mattress on the ground right in this channel right here. The mattress down right there. Um, I feel like I shouldn't be doing this with my door open because everyone who drives by is like, what is this guy doing? Setting up a bed in there. Yeah, see what I mean? Anyway, so one thing I did not consider tonight, which maybe I can do something about right now, it's gonna be hot tonight. Right now, it's gotta be like 90 degrees in the van. It's only 70 degrees outside. And I don't have a roof vent. Um, I might leave a window open a crack, but holy cow, I think the heat is gonna be the worst thing about tonight. Worse than getting a knock or anything like that. Yeah, yikes. Anyways, you guys will see how it goes, I guess. Wish me luck. Yup, you heard me. Despite building out that bed frame, I'm still throwing my mattress on the floor for Boston. That's because I don't have any blackout situation going on, and people can still see me through the window. So the lower I am, the more I'm hidden. But I'm leaving on my cross-country road trip in just a couple of days, and I will definitely be using the bed frame for that. Stick around, I'll show you guys how that goes.